Talk to us about what's next on your wish list. You've done the Aunt Bessie's acquisition. Are there more acquisitions in your targets? Thanks to be back first. It's very, very nice to be here. Um, it's, it's going to be, as always, with us some sort of combination between organic growth and potential M&A. So we're going to remain very disciplined with, with M&A. So what really matters first is profitable growth. Uh, that's part of our mantra, that's part of our algorithm, and we don't want to deviate from there. And then indeed, at the same time, we are the leader, the consolidator of the frozen food industry in Europe. And so we have the right and the obligation, I would put it that way, to, um, to complete the consolidation in Europe, which, which makes sense from the shareholder standpoint. Bloomberg Intelligence actually suggests that ready frozen meals may grow twice as much as other food areas, including things like delivery and, and so on. Yeah. How do you plan on taking advantage of that in Europe, where you are also competing with the likes of Deliveroo, Uber Eats, and all these other types of ways to eat? Well, the, the first thing is we have a fantastic distribution network. Uh, not only, obviously, the, the traditional retailers, but definitely we're doing extremely well, uh, digitally speaking. Online is fine. We're doing extremely well, people, people like Ocado and, uh, and with the Tesco of the world. So, for example, in the UK, 13% um, of our sales is, is delivered through um, online. So it's, it's, it's great. And we're not going to limit ourselves, by the way, to, um, to ready meals. The big thing for us is, is plant protein, starting with peas. We're launching this right big time in the UK. We're very excited. All right, Stefan, let's pick up on someone yeah. who's not doing so well right now. Uh, the guys over at 3G, we saw Kraft Heinz really, really slide in the last week. Um, bad numbers, things not really working out the way they had hoped. Can you just handicap that situation for us a little bit? Like, why are some of the big food companies struggling so much right now? Well, the thing is, Ed, <laughs> if I want to focus myself on, on our business, and I'm never going to lecture all these guys. Uh, that's that's the, the problem. The, the good news for us is we are just a pure player in frozen food in Europe, which is doing well, has a lot to offer. And, uh, and I think the fact that we are a pure player you know, is, is really great. First, you don't have to choose between so many different categories. And we don't want to be in too many categories. I think it's, it's difficult. And it offers, you know, obviously, the focus of all people, the flexibility, the agility to move fast. That, that probably makes a big difference. And we've been quite disciplined from that standpoint. Talk to us a bit about Brexit. The UK, a hugely important market for you. We're very close to potentially some decision. Yeah. If we do have a hard Brexit, what's the contingency plan? Well, the, the, in the near term, uh, we've built up, you know, inventories. Which, is, which makes a lot of sense. The good news, again, is frozen is easier to, to, to stock. How much inventory? Like, how many fish fingers are we talking Are you stockpiling, in other words? Ah, uh, indeed. That's exactly what we're doing. In some categories where we're importing from, from Europe, for example, fish fingers is one of the things, uh, where we have to... It's not so much in terms of, obviously, not being able to import, but it's also the question of tariffs and the rest of it. So it's millions, millions of, uh, of fish fingers, as you can imagine. So we're moving from five weeks to eight, to eight weeks, uh, based on the 29th of March. God knows whether it's going to be 29th of March or something else. Um, Mr. Teshmaker, a, a question from London continuing the, uh, the Brexit theme. What happens if there is a hard Brexit to the way you buy fish? Now, this sounds like a strange question, uh, but one of the areas that we could see the biggest changes in is, is in fishing stocks and where fish are landed. What happens if the UK leaves with a hard Brexit in terms of the way you source food? In terms of um, sourcing fish, it doesn't change that much for us because at this stage, uh, cod, uh, cod and pollock, which are our main fish, are sourced from, uh, from the US, Alaska, and from Russia. So from that standpoint, it doesn't change anything because we don't source from, uh, from North Sea and, and all the rest of it. So that uh, doesn't make any, any, any changes. What changes, obviously, is we processing part of our fish uh, in Germany, and we have to import, to, to, to import it back to, 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 uh, to the UK. That's the only difference. But again, we have, we have plants. And we know what we have to do if, if there is no deal, which is a hard Brexit. Uh, we, we, can, we, can, we have solutions. And our brands are very strong, which helps, obviously, in that kind of situations. Can I ask you about, I, uh, Ed was talking to you about, um, uh, about how much you're stockpiling. How much is that costing you? I'm, I'm just curious. Everything I hear is that basically every facility that can store anything in the UK at the moment is absolutely full. So I'm assuming that it must be costing a fair bit to store all this. Well, it doesn't cost that much. That's less of the point. The, the real point is in terms of working capital, as you can imagine. So I hope that our investors will appreciate that our working capital will not be optimized by the end of Q1 for, the, for obvious reasons. We first need to serve our customers and our consumers. 
Stephen, let's just wrap on some some potential M&A. Yeah. You guys, as Vonnie said at the top, have done a lot of interesting deals in the last couple of years. You've gone through a period of growth. You have that license to go out and acquire. What are you looking at? The, the, it's, we have a very clear playbook. Playbook is consolidation of the frozen food industry in Europe. And it's a, the playbook is really a combination of top line and a bit of cost line. And that makes a big difference. So Any it's particular a, asset? So, like, what about her to the Nestle asset that we know is on the block? Well, let's say we've, we started with a good fellas in the UK, which is a great uh, pizza, pizza brand. So we have a nice position in the, in, um, in the UK. We're very, very small in the rest of, of, um, of Europe. And it's a great category. It's a category that is growing very nicely. And, uh, and then we have to consider different options between buying and building. And that's exactly what we're doing right now, but we have time. And any plans to expand over here in the U.S.? Oh, U.S. Is, is, a, is a fantastic, it's a fantastic country. In terms, of, it's a fantastic market. We have a, obviously most of our shareholders are American. Uh, and at the same time, if we're given the right opportunity to the right, the right things, we will do it. But definitely, in terms of strictly speaking, mathematically speaking, I would almost say, it's easier right now to finish the game in the frozen food in, in, the, in the frozen food category in Europe.